Okay. Welcome everybody to the Bike and Bananas birthday special here on Grown Man Rec Night. And we wish everybody Happy New Year. Happy, Happy New Year. Happy birthday, Earth. Happy birthday, this Earth. And we welcome back to the program Steve Fever, who's been on a hiatus for a little bit. It's good to be here. What you been doing? You have a good holiday? I did. I've had a lot of good a lot of good time off. You guys are zodiacs, right? So you guys worship the mountain peaks for during the holidays? Not exactly. Not no? exactly. Okay. No, no. Um, I like zodiacs. There's nothing wrong with that. Went and saw the family. Yeah, down in uh, Georgia. Georgia. Yeah. Okay. That's a good time. Woodstock. Hey, Kitty. What's going on? We're live on the air. Don't be don't be messing around. Um, yeah. I, I made my I made my haircut. You did. Yeah, that's, that's what I did. Trim your beard. I've not trimmed my beard. Looks like you trimmed your beard a little bit. Just a little, uh, just a little <laughs> bit of the outskirts for, uh, cause um, I um, just pull the mic down. I've done. Uh, oh yeah, all of a sudden we we gotta watch this because we know there's kids watching our show. Yeah, that's the that's the pressure. It's the pressures of being us. Well, how was your Christmas? It was good. Was, was Saint Nicholas good to you, or good did times, you get visited man. by, uh, what's the other the dark one? Uh, Crimbus? A Winter Man? Yeah. <laughs> I did have a visit from Winter Man. Uh, it was pretty incredible. No, I got, I've been really, uh, been playing some video games on my I vacation. Dutch, I think the Dutch are kind of racist. I also got a slide for my guitar, so I've been playing a lot of slide guitar uh, over to over to break, which is really fun. so you tune it to G or A. I've been doing an open G tune, no, an open D tuning. I'm okay. sorry. So that way the top part feels a little bit like a drop D to me sure. for an old rocker right. that uh, feels right to have it in drop D. But then the rest of it's actually you know G. So bing. sure. Uh, but it's uh, it's been real fun, and I've had I've had a blast doing that and drinking a lot of uh, cold beer. So you're fixing to go down to the crossroads, is what you're telling me? That's what I'm saying. I'm gonna go up here to the crossroads and. Lay out a little hat, maybe I'll make me a little bit of money. Don't make me a little money. Hey, I, wait, I, th wait. I think I mentioned it, but I'll tell I'll tell the audience. Uh, my band will be right down the street here. Yeah. In about four weeks, we're gonna play a, a club. Little lead neck we're gonna open. We're gonna open for a, a band. Uh, they're like a tribute band, or a, I don't know what they are. But you uh, know their name? We're just trying to get our face back out there. We've been off for a while. So we're going to open for this band. Then I thought I would pop over here because it's on a Friday night to pop okay. over here and do the show. We should maybe. Uh, It'd be nice if I could bring a clip, but. What we, time do y'all? Uh, <laughs> what time do y'all play? I don't know. We're going to open. It'd be cool if I could stream from my phone in there and then come back here. That would real be quick. funny. Maybe I'll do that. That would be funny. Maybe we'll work out a way first to do time, that. First time ever. And we'll start the show a little later. I don't know. It's been a cool new year. I've uh, been uh, hanging out and doing some stuff and whatnot. And uh, like a lot of people do, you know, a lot of people make the like the best of list, you know, the best of 2014. I have to say, um, I have to say that I don't uh, I don't do that a whole lot, and I don't buy a whole lot of like brand new records. No, to be no, I, I can't afford to do that. Um, you want to try to pour a shot here? Uh, I'll do that, but I won't do it again. Okay. Well, I'll just you can wait or whatever. I'll I'm just gonna keep drinking. Well, I'm not gonna let you drink by yourself. Um, So I'm not one to really go out and buy a lot of new releases, but the ones I do are generally pretty special to me. And um, it's hard to talk right after that, isn't it? Yeah, I had a lot of, a lot of slobber. You get that little excess slobber, that slight aftertaste of, of that. Wow. It tastes like you're getting like a shot from the doctor. Like a, it tastes like America. Um, so anyhow, I, I figured uh, let, I'm, let's look back on the records that we have bought this year uh, in 2014, and. Um, Maybe talk about what would be rank high for us. You know, uh, I think 2014 largely uh, was a, the year of the reissue. Major reissues came out. We're talking the Beatles mono stuff. And that's probably only going to get bigger and bigger, right? Yeah, think. the Zeppelin stuff yeah. and the Can reissues, just right. to name a few. All three of those were done right. They sounded really good. And the Beatles reissues yeah, that's came what, out in mono. Did Beatle, you say that? I said that. I'm not listening. I said that. Um, Beatles, Zeppelin, Can, I mean, a lot of good stuff is coming out. Um, uh, so I think that was some of the bigger deals this year. But there was a lot of good records come out. So I pulled from my collection the stuff that I'd bought this year. Uh, and you, did you bring some 2014 records? I brought a couple. I mean, you kind of threw this at me at the last minute. So yeah. I, I just, you know. I, we hadn't bought a whole lot of brand new stuff. Yeah, I'm more into used records. But, you know, I will say... 
I thought about the lips for a minute. The funny thing I is, you'd buy I don't the think lips. they've put out great stuff this year. They've put out a lot of stuff this year. I, I think they've put out at least five or six albums in 20, 20, that's, 2014. That's nuts. Um, the, the one I like of the ones I have is that it's called H7 or H37 Skies. Is that one of the record store day ones? I think it is. Okay. Um, and I could be wrong. It might have been a couple years ago they put it out, but I picked it up and I thought it was this year. Yeah. Um, it was pretty good. A lot of the stuff, I don't know, that, that tribute to Sgt. Pepper's. I like the stuff with Miley Cyrus a whole lot. Yeah. But the, the rest of it, I don't know that I like. Maybe it'll grow on me, but. They're really hard to keep up with. Yeah. Electric Worms, that's another new one you bought this year. But I was real year. happy with the, with the can albums that came out. Um, and it's hard to keep up with those because yeah. you, you want to have them all. But I did bring a couple that I was, I was proud to pick up. Uh, uh, the Weezer album. Everything yeah. will be all right in the end. Great record, man. It's, it's a good record. It, it makes you think of Weezer in the old days and the Blue yep. album, the Definitely Green album. Definitely pulls you back. It's got a little gnarl to it. Um, Jay's over playing, playing damn telephone. Dad's over there looking at That's pictures right. of his, his right. child. Are we talking son or daughter? I'm sorry. Son. 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 Pictures they don't know yet. Whatever. You didn't show his <laughs> penis or nothing. And uh, the other one I brought, I was uh, glad to get, is the Primus... Uh, Primus in the Chocolate Factory. This is the limited edition. I got number 0568 of 1,000. Nice. Um, great album. Uh, don't have all the bells and whistles. It's their bootleg. You know, it's not a bootleg. It's, of course, issued by them. Yeah. And, uh, you know, some of the other stuff that came out this year, I have to throw out, like, the Beck record. That was a big deal and probably something I should have picked up. Um, I've also really discovered, in turn, if you want to get a little... What was the biggest selling album? Oh, it was... Um, Frozen, wasn't it? Oh, that and... Uh, the Frozen sound. Taylor right. Swift was the only one Probably to sell over. Probably Taylor Swift came late in the game. Only person to go platinum this year or something. But I think, uh, I think Frozen something. took it. Now, I don't know about vinyl, but... Yeah, uh, but something I'd, I'd recently listened to for the first time uh, on the heavier side of things... I'm real selective and picky about my heavy shit nowadays. So I used to just like anything heavy, but um, the band Yob, that's Y-O-B, uh, released an album that came out in uh, September, uh, Clearing the Path to Ascend. And uh, Rolling Stone, actually, and I don't put a lot of salt in what Rolling Stone has to say anymore. When I was a teenager, it was a big effing deal what Rolling Stone yeah, had to oh say. Yeah, oh yeah. Nowadays, I could give a shit what they say, but they actually ranked this the number one metal album of the year. Yob, Clearing the Path of Sin. I've listened to it on YouTube, and I've streamed it a few times. Uh, really quality record, and I think that's something I'm going to look toward picking up. It's not something just crazy heavy. It's got a lot of nice dynamics, and uh, I think there was a new Opeth record this year, and I, people were really excited about that. So there's been some cool stuff, um, even things that maybe we haven't picked up. Uh, some of the stuff that really uh, jumps in my head, we've played it last week, and it was a dig of the week the week before that, is the new Melvin's record with a couple of cats from the... Uh, Butthole Surfers. I've been really enjoying uh, hearing that. And uh, what really, this is like a tie for me of what I've bought um, brand new this year. All three of these are pretty much tied for just like the best record of the year. Last year, I think I had the Boards of Canada uh, yeah. and Volto as my albums of the year. Um, and this year, we're going to go with the Melvins. Earth, Primitive and Deadly, which is one of the most incredible records I've heard in a really long time. Mm -hmm. um, Fantastic stuff That's and good. really hard to Somebody's categorize. Who's singing on that? Um, the dude from uh, Mark Lanigan has yeah. some tracks, and there's also some other people singing too. But I know Mark Lanigan's on a couple of tracks. And really, when you get down to it, uh, something I was probably the most excited about all year uh, is the new Aphex Twin, Cyro. Sure. Uh, that came out, and um, I couldn't have been more stoked to jump out and pick this up. It takes a lot for me to, hey, what date is that coming out? And then I go up there and I buy it pretty soon thereafter mm -hmm. um, and that's one of these records um, I was really interested in what it sounds like and I've had a really good time uh, checking it out and uh, listening to it with my uh, my ear hole stuff so, anyhow, so you said St. Nick brought you a slide okay yeah a little slide guitar St. or uh, not St. Nick but uh, uh, one of my in-laws brought me this oh yeah These cool uh, speakers. <laughs> Can you get those closer to the camera? Closer to the camera? Sure. I think so. Check this out, folks. Oh. What? 
That's pretty damn cool, man. I'm it's, not, like, it's like dancing water. I'm not mad at that at all. So I'm playing my iPod, playing my iPod through it, but uh, you know, it like I guess takes the vibrations, I guess. Beat frequencies, bro. So there you go. That's kind of cool. That's, I think uh, I think that's from Think Geek. Think Geek has a lot of great uh, uh, just oddball things, and uh, I got this from in-laws that I was really really happy to get. I think the year before they gave me the uh, mini theremin. Oh yeah. That I use it at the office. same people. When people, yeah, when people get on the phone in the office and they get on the speaker phone, I throw on the theremin and just start like wailing on it, like. <laughs> that's uh, that's pretty cool. I, I enjoy the theremin. That's that's cool. That's from the same place. Let me uh, bust in a little uh, free music archive update here. What we're playing underneath us here tonight, uh, if you can hear it. If not, I, I don't know. Just. Bear with us, because uh, that's always an X factor trying to get. Actually, it might be good not to hear it as loud. I think last week you guys were too loud. I wanted to enjoy it. I wanted to bit bit track I it. Keep dropping this shit. Uh, so what we have this week, uh, I went a little kraut rockish. This is a band called Echo Chamber Rope Trick, classified as um, kraut rock. They're from the south southwest England reverberating through the mist of Somerset levels across the Devon moorlands and over the Dorset Downs come Echo Chamber Rope Trick. We do have a lot of Kraut Rock fans. Uh, yeah, that's true. In the BC. Part folk, part post-punk, part psychedelic. Their improvised sessions produce raw and visceral mix of sounds drenched in delay. That's pretty cool. So I've actually not listened to these guys. I just kind of went through last minute because I realized, like, oh shit, I've not, uh, I've not got anything to listen to for the free music, free music archive uh, underneath us here, and so I went to Kraut Rock and said, hey, here's a band that's got a couple albums. I downloaded them on my phone. You've got an Android phone, folks. Um, I downloaded those right on my phone, un uh, unzipped them, and they went right into my music folder. Free music, free albums. It's free real it's estate. It's free. Jim Bowie, it's real estate. Just for you might you. you might find something that you know just turns the corner for you when it comes to like listening to music. You know, earlier I was talking about I'm taking another one of these. You know, uh, earlier I, I was talking about we were cutting a lime to, uh, you know. You said a lime, right? Yeah. Okay. And uh, we don't do that. Here. I like to I like to get the the lime on my fingers and then I. I love the smell of lime. I rub it on my neck because I think a lot a lime scent makes a really good uh, um, and, and, and cologne. And every time I do that, it, it always gives me a rash. And I think it, it's starting to. You see putting it. lime juice on your neck? Yeah, you see a red. It's too acidic. Red place? Is there a red place? Uh, yeah, a little bit. I made a rash. I know it does it, but you know, you only live once. So go rub lime on your neck. Make you everybody smell good Jay about it. Jamie rash. <laughs> Misty rash. Mm. Oh, Shit, Arcapeggio. <laughs> Ooh, okay. <laughs> mustache. What? I must ask you a question. Okay, so I'll tell you what, folks. Let's get into a little bit of what we played. Now, what we played! Here's going to be a little different thing. You know, everybody says New Year. New, New Year! You, New You. New You. New York. New. Um, so what we're going to do from now on, this is the law according to the rules. From this point forward, when we get into our what we played, uh, we're not going to... Uh, Especially if we get a, pi a pile of records we really want to play, and we've not talked about them on the show yet. That's going to be big of the week. So you wait until the show, and then we play them after the show. Everybody's all effed up, and it's late, yeah, and, everybody, yeah. and everybody jumps off. And of the sometimes we forget to play something we wanted to play. And I love everybody that joins us live, but I know what happens. As soon as the talk show portion of the show's gone, Ooh. everybody splits. So we're going to start playing some of these digs of the week. Up earlier the in the show, and then still mention them and what we played, and throw the dig of the week graphic up. Okay, I now, like we'll, that idea because I don't have to bring as many records over. Yeah, and we'll still have <laughs> there'll still be digs of the week we probably don't get to throughout the show that we can do at the very end. 
but it'll all be kind of one big section. And I, I, hated, I hated holding on to these gems that I wanted to share, you know. Yeah, and then I a lot of times play them. when I play something that I'm really excited for somebody to hear and I look and there's like, oh, there's like three people left watching. <laughs> Which, hey, I mean, I take what I can get, but at the same time. And the cool thing about playing digs, sometimes you hadn't heard the whole thing through, so it's your first listen to also. That, uh, that's true. And you don't, it, this fucking thing might skip, who knows? I'm using F-bombs like Jay did last week. Sorry about that. Jay was up here just F this, F that. I was trying to show my mom the show. I was like, oh, I just couldn't do it. Sorry. <laughs> Jay ruined it for moms. Okay, so starting out for uh, what we played. I'm this just, is, I just kidding. I didn't, do, I didn't do that. This was actually something that was left on the table because I've been drinking for 18 days straight. But you've made a tradition of what's on the table. You kind of start with that, right? If I leave it, that's what I do. And I try not to leave it because it's not good for records, but I'm not good for records. Let's be honest. <laughs> um, a little tres hombres. I'll tell you what, the other night, this was off the era. Um, oh, one of these days I've been off. I don't know which one it was, but I had me a hunk of meat in Yonder Steve. And my mom gave me one of them Taco Bell uh, taco kits. Oh. Now it comes with the shells and the, the sauce, sauce and the yeah. seasoning. You just, all you got to do is ground, brown all the ground meat. All you got to do is cook it yourself a little meat and brown it up the pan and add the stuff to it. And so I, I did that. And um, there was a new girl on the VC that posted something about playing music while she's cooking. I was like, that's really cool because I tend to like, um, specifically with Mexican food, if I'm doing taco night, I'm always pulling out the Herb Albert and the Mexicali brass and stuff. Mm -hmm. And this is the one I finished with the other night, ZZ Top Trace Hombres, and this is the reason I did this. If you've never looked at this album, uh, look at the gatefold in there. Oh my God, it's gonna make me. Was it a taco? Look at the tilted deck, get down there. Here, look at oh, that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude. Mm. It's perfect. Nice, um, nice spread. So when, I, when we're finishing up, actually the side two finished, right, let me see that, Jay. Side two finished, uh, right? That's the one thing I hadn't had over, the meat this, off the this stove. break is some good Mexican. I'm going to have to hit that tomorrow. I've been in a real taco mood, I am mood, drinking man. Soul, by the way. Yeah, that's one. That's probably my favorite Mexican beer. It's a good German beer. Yeah. That's exactly what it is. <laughs> All right. Let me sit that guy down there, Jay. What we got coming in? This was something else I'd kind of left up near the player, and I'm like, oh, man, screw it. I'm going to play it because I love it. Uh, the Early Animals with Eric Burden. It's a Pickwick uh, Canadian reissue. I love Eric Burden. This is one of the... Um, it's a Pickwick. It's a Pickwick. It's a good reissue, man. Everybody, you know, Pickwick's got a bad rep, but um, I dig listening to that record. I don't know. Shit. Shit. Yeah. They, they were smart to grab some good labels and, and reprint. reprint sure. Uh, you know, it's not OG material, but it uh, wow, sounds great to me. I yeah. don't know. It's not bad. I like music, Steve. I don't know about nobody else. Seems like a lot of people out there like math and matrix numbers and, uh, you know, stuff like that. I just like old music. Especially these are albums to keep the party moving. Damn straight. I like old music, man. I like music. Uh, a little present from Jay. A little Ramsey Lewis trio. It's a best of. Choice. Best Choice! Of. Uh, first time I played on the show. Point. That's good, man. <laughs> that was good. That's the first time jamming it out. It's, uh... That's some good business, man. I really love the Ramsey Lewis trio. The cool thing about Ramsey Lewis, man, if you're a jazz fan and even funk fan and some of his releases, um, you can find Ramsey Lewis on the cheap. He's a solid Goodwill staple, so you never have to go too long without seeing a Ramsey Lewis uh, record. And for a buck, 75 cent, man, pick them up all day long. and You'll like some better than others, mind you. But... Um, they're definitely solid picks. For I like the trio. We'll go with the, the trio. The trio is always good. That's more traditional jazzy, mm -hmm. the traditional trio. You know, we mentioned the year of the reissue earlier, and Jay brought this for that very reason. Uh, Zeppelin II, this is the reissue that came out this year. Yeah, that was the only 2014 that I think I actually brought. You know, looking back on this, now that you've had the chance to really uh, experience it, listen to it, caress it, uh, go to the restroom with it, Tell me what uh, what's your impressions of the sound of these Zeppelin reissues? I think it's really good. This is actually. the Brown Bomber album, yeah, by the way. Two, the Brown uh, Bomber. Uh, Led Zeppelin two about three or four months ago it was actually a Bob Ludwig uh, pressing. Yeah. Which are fairly rare from what I read. So it, it kind of compares with that. It's a it's a. I don't know. I mean, I, I don't have the ears like you guys have, but it, it's no, a, I don't. I ain't got nothing. Sounds I played really, rock and roll really swans on I ain't got no ears. Sounds a little bassy. You know, really? Which I, which I like though. Yeah. And, uh, it's driving. Nice. Yeah. No, no, I like it. 
cool. Yeah, I've heard, I've heard good things about it. I mean, nobody's really griped about it. Plus, it's a good way to update your record. If you have one shitting, you can update it. Yeah, man. Or you can play the hell out of a reissue, and then, you know, if you got an OG. Man, you had, I ain't heard much of these guys lately. What are they up to? <laughs> That's a great. I don't, have we told that story no, on the show? No. One time, uh, me and Jay back in high school. Oh, were, Jay there? Yeah. Hell. And with, with a bunch of fellows up in a Mexican restaurant, and uh, a dude we were with was wearing a Led Zeppelin shirt. And this old redneck fellow said, Led Zeppelin. I don't see them around much anymore. <laughs> this is in like the 90s. He was dead serious, and we were dead. Um, we were dead embryonic cells. <laughs> okay. Um, followed that up with a little King Curtis. I decided to. I'm not been given. I, I've been. This has bothered me at some points, and I've still, still been doing it tonight. I always go What's back that? a little bit. I've not been playing many funk records, and that's kind of the core mm. of Roll Man Record Night. And I've really started with funk because you were watching. You were watching Good Times. You got that right. Uh, I know the story. And I've, I've really been, uh, I guess, more in a rocky mood. I have to remind myself to play jazzy stuff, to play funky stuff, because I've been playing so much, so many rock records. I mean, I mean, I'm a rocker by heart, bro. What? Yo. Night Dogs. We own the night. Oh. 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 <laughs> um. Work it in. I've got a funny story about that. I'll save that for another time. King Curtis, everybody's talking. Um, love some King Curtis, man. Real funky, real smooth, real, ah! real jazzy. I mean, I... Hadn't somebody sampled that or taken that song that you played? That was that... Bam. Boom. 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 Yeah. Boom. There was no singing on that one, but they're singing. Yeah, I've heard, like, uh, grunting. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> Groove Me. <laughs> Groove Me is the song. Yeah. Look at that. He's got the, what is that? It's like an elevated candelabra over there. It's nice. It's nice. It's nice. That's a great album. Very good. Tell me a little bit about this now. Well, this I picked up a couple days ago. At our good. Oh, really? So you're Jonathan, telling me that this would typically be part of... Underdog Records, Dig of the Week. Dig of the Week. Yeah, man. This, this uh, I was really week. happy to pick this up because it is... So Sounds so nice, and I've got a I've got a lot of old Jefferson airplane, but yeah, me too. Some of it's kind of scratchy and surface noise and whatnot, and this is not. This is from '87. It's a compilation. Okay. Um, it's interesting the way they put it together. It's called 2400 Fulton Street, which uh -huh. is of course. Okay. God damn it! Knock on my skateboard over, Steve. I knocked my mic over. Which is the address of their home in San Francisco, in Haight Ashbury. Oh, okay. Uh, this is from '87. This is from 1987, and the way they lay it out, side one is about the beginnings of the band. Side two is called Psychedelia. Side three is called uh, uh, Revolution, and side four is Airplane Parts. So they kind of laid it out in a, in a way that, uh, not chronologically, but yet uh, thematically, I guess, would you would say. That's pretty cool, man. This had, And this is, has some of the real uh, real gems on it. I mean, oh, yeah, oh yeah. cool gatefold on here. Um but yeah, it's, um, I, I was I was thinking this as you put this on. It's like, man, I really love some freaking uh, Jefferson Airplane, and it just it can get I can I can get down yeah. with Jefferson Airplane like in the middle of the day when I'm like doing work. Yeah, we played White, White Rabbit, and uh, there's a lot of good liner notes in there. Oh, he, the guy who kind of someone involved with the with writing some of the liner notes interviewed uh, two or three of the members of the band and. and uh, uh, Grace was saying, you know, she wrote White Rabbit before she was in Jefferson Airplane, but what she had done was taken acid, and she had listened okay. to Sketches of Spain for like 24 hours. Whoa. Miles Davis, Sketches of Spain. So it got it got that whole bolero thing in her mind. And, That's you know, heavy, bro. Kind of wrote around that. I thought that was really interesting. So, hmm. yeah, I thought I would share that with you. You know, we got one, uh, one more record we played uh, before we, uh, I don't know, we got another one, too. It's over there. Grab that cover, Jay, behind you, if you would, please. Um... But I've been uh, I've been really vibing on this on my uh, vacation. Uh, this style of music, been playing a lot of Queens of the Stone Age, some Eagles of Death Metal, uh, and some Caius. This is uh, the only Caius I own on vinyl at this point. Uh, this is uh, one of their later albums. I think the last album uh, in the Circus Left Town. A lot of people say me me me. It doesn't have the original drummer. Me me me. It's a kick-ass record. Shove it up your ass. How about that? 
How about them apples? Uh, I think that, that record just smokes it right on down the right on down the road. It's funny to say this, but there's some pretty good dancing music on there. I mean, it gets kind of catch you moving. That's I, dude. I was saying. I this, never thought that was Caius, but I, will, will you hand me that record that's on that turntable? I would say I, I said this earlier that the Eagles of Death Metal stuff. Yeah. Never, except for the music they play on Saved by the Bell when they're at the max, has a rock <laughs> band ever um, made me want to dance. Not a funk band, because James Brown makes me just uncontrollable. Oh, sure. Uh, but Eagles of Death Metal makes me want to, like, not sarcastically, not ironically, but just actually rock and roll dance. Not yeah. slam dance or pit or nothing. Uh, but it's just got that kind of feel to it. If you never checked out Eagles of Death Metal, uh, very cool stuff. Jesse Hughes uh, sings. Josh Homme actually plays drums. Um, I think Dave Catching from uh, the Joshua Tree Studios in there. We're playing. talking Stoner Rock, Desert Rock. It's fantastic stuff, man, and it's uh, it doesn't give enough love. Um, really, everybody loves Caius and Queens of the Stone Age, but check out Eagles of Death Metal if you've not. Uh, that whole scene really intrigues me. Uh, so, down to my damn core. What was that last one we heard? Now another dig of the week. Oh, it is. <laughs> yeah. Keep me got a couple on the days. Here. This one I got at uh, one of our, our Honey Holes uh, Dynasty. Oh, edit. And three, <laughs> two, one. I hadn't been back there in a while. You know, it's one of these places where you get $2 per record. And, you yeah. Know, sometimes if you go kind there at the right together. time, you get a great record. And I got a great record. This is uh, Burning Beat with uh, Gene Krupa, Buddy Rich. Yeah, man. A couple of the greats. It's a follow up to the album they had in 55, which was Rich and Krupa, or Krupa and Rich. Uh, and this is from 1962 on the Verve. That's crazy because I got that one for free. One uh, of my favorite labels. Rich versus Rich. Oh, that's on the, that's on the Verve? Yeah, baby. Check it mm. out. So I was really happy to get that. Uh, great drummer, Gene Krupa. Mm. I mean, I think John Bonham was, was heavily influenced by Gene Krupa. I thought I would say and that's I learned this pretty from accurate. A, I learned this from a, a, a 92-year-old woman who used to come to our shows. 92? <laughs> she, she thought that our drummer reminded her, the way he played, of Gene Krupa when he actually was playing John Bonham style. But John Bonham style is Gene Krupa style. It's like uh. balls to the wall, let it go, thrash, very physical with the drums. Yeah. There's a crazy 80s. Uh, and there may be drugs or alcohol involved, <laughs> so. Yeah. You know, uh, so. I, I thought it was very interesting. I think I, I may have mentioned this last week or the week before. I don't know. This has all been a big blur. My dad calls it a bender. A bender? Um, you going a bender? But um, interesting, when Jack White was, I was watching an interview, Jack White with Dan Rather. Those and, guys are always hanging out. Yeah. It's a really good interview. It's like a 51-minute interview called really? The Big Interview, that, some new thing that Dan Rather does on the web. Okay. And um, Jack White was like, I've never smoked pot. I said, what? He's never smoked pot. He's not a drinker. And he said something always resonated with him because somebody was saying, like a lot of people say, you know, when the Beatles started doing drugs, it's like, man, those albums were just incredible. And he was like, screw that, man. He was like, that ain't the Beatles. He was like, that's not... If you do a bunch of drugs and record a record, that's not you. That's not really you laying down those tracks. Right. And he was like, so I don't even count those records. Hmm. And I I was like, whoa. we got to appreciate that. That's pretty heavy. Uh, but it, you know, he said so. That always kind of stuck with him, and so he just plays music without any of that. I respect that. I can respect that. Ain't nothing better than a cold beer and a hot guitar, though, buddy. Woo! <laughs> That's what I like to do. Mmm. Woo! Bender. Cold beer, hot guitar. Bender. Uh, <laughs> we, do? we got some other stuff that we're going to talk about for Dig of the Week now. Are we? You got some stuff. Hell, I, hell, I ain't got shit. Well, I got okay. some stuff on the way. We're gonna talk about it probably next time. I could time. talk about some. I could talk about a few things. Okay. Well, I ain't gonna stop you, Steve. Shit. Shit, damn. Oh, now. It's America, baby. Woo! Ain't that America? Ain't that America? You and me. Land them free. Home of the brave. Let's start with a couple things I bought at a local spot, and I just wanted to buy them just because I wanted the covers. I don't give a shit. Really? What the vinyl's like. 
In fact, one of them didn't even have vinyl in it, but I wanted the cover so bad I bought it anyway. Uh, we'll start with one here. This is, uh, I thought maybe, I'm going to donate these both to the show. Maybe we can put them on display. Okay. This one's uh, Mustang Mobile Homes Presents the Messengers. I don't, I don't think. <laughs> I don't, I don't think it wasn't free. I paid $2 for that. I don't think that's real. But sir. I wanted it so bad because it. From the digging spot. I got it from the digging spot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Check that out. Would you like that? Dude. Isn't that nice? Is that, uh, that's just incredible. Is that, uh, it's probably a gospel it's album. It's probably gospel. Look at that nice picture of the mobile home. Of a back. nice mobile home. Exactly. Yep. Last but not least here, you got to be fast. Nipsey Russell. Oh, yeah. For adults only. Check what? out the cover on this. That means he's going to talk about you, fucking. You got to be fast. Nipsey Russell. He's going to have some blue humor. He's going to go blue. It's blue. You got to work clean before you gotta work put, blue. And notice the sticker. You need to get the, your chops. The sticker. the sticker is placed on there. It's not printed on the cover. So I think they placed it on there on purpose to make it seem racier. Huh. Know, I don't mean racier like black white. I mean racier. Oh, yeah, okay. shut up. Humor Sonic Records. Humor Sonic Records. So I was, it doesn't have vinyl, but I don't Steve's care. Little baby love short it's and short Nipsey and Russell. Steve's little baby love short and And red. I think it, be, it belongs here. So okay, uh, I got a couple gifts from my my son's uh, girlfriend. Oh, that's a good girlfriend. She gave me some de some records. Nice. That's the best way to a man's heart. I think. That's a that's a chalk so, up for her. Uh, first of all, I think you have this. this I do. Is, that this was, was in one of the boxes. VCLT from uh, uh, it's DJ the, Thunder it's 1970. The gold album. Old Dave. Uh, this is from 1972 on Fantasy Records, and I love open up, kind of open it from the front. See, you see the four heads kind of open up. It's it's really neat the way they did it. Uh, yeah, that's what Dave gave me that in the parking lot. Oh, that's right. Yeah. And uh, another record she gave me was uh, yeah. Wings Lon London Town, London Town oh. from 1978, I think. It's uh, it's good. It's it's actually better than I thought it was. I listened to it last night. It's got um, what's the one big hit on here is uh, with a little luck. So it's got that kind of wah, wah, vibey keyboard sound. Um, but there's really some good stuff on here, and uh, I was really glad to get that. And so. Like I said, Capitol Records from 1978. Huh, that's really neat. Yeah. What's uh, that deal now? Well, from the... Uh, I like that art. From a honey hole. Picked it up for a couple bucks. This is uh, in really, really good shape. I love a good compilation. I'll say that right off the top. Sure. And th this I'm is not one of those... Some people are opposed This is it. one of those for Friday night that keeps the party moving. Damn you can't straight. beat a really good compilation. This is the Super Groups. It's an ATCO compilation. See, mine's it's different. It's got uh, Vanilla Fudge, oh. Buffalo Springfield, Cream and the Rascals, nice. Iron Butterfly on here. One of mine has and Vanilla each Fudge of, on there, it. There's like two songs from each band on here. Really? At least. Uh, from, See, I've got those stuff. those Atlantic compilations from 68 it's, area. Um, this is from 1969. That's right around really that same. Nice, yeah. Really nice. Really nice. You've got one very similar to that. I've got a couple of those. It's got. It, it's the same way with the lineup. It's just like, mm -hmm. ah, Here's what? one that uh, Chase, we're oh, big, big fans of the show. I may have that one. I think you might have this one. Yeah. It's called Enea, which is, it's written in Greek letters. Uh, I don't know if Bill Chase is Greek or not, but this is from 1972. Check his arm hair. Enea, more Enea, arm hair than... <laughs> Enea is the Greek word for nine. And I think there's nine guys in the band. The, the side two on this album is epic. It's really good. It's all about uh, Greek gods like, uh, let's see, it goes, uh, side two is like uh, Cronus, which is Saturn, Zeus, Poseidon, Aphrodite, and Hades. Hmm. And uh, basically he's snubbing his nose at Chicago and, and blood, sweat, and tears. This album, I listened to it, and it's, it's really good. It's like uh, Maynard Ferguson meets yeah. Jesus Christ Superstar yeah, I can and, see, yeah. and Blood, Sweat, and Tears. I, it's got that really sharp horns. I was gonna say, if anybody could be like, um, oh, you're gonna put you gonna put horns in a rock band? Chicago, Blood, Sweat, and Tears. Is, is that what you're doing? Is that what you're gonna? Yeah. Chase is one of those yeah. guys that could come up and be like, <laughs> let me show you how it's done. Yeah, it's really good. Yeah. Yeah. Now terrific. here's he's another good. one. I was really glad to pick this up. I like Charlie Daniels. Yeah. I really wanted to get this album. This is Fire on the Mountain. Mm. And this is on uh, Embassy Records. It's just from 19... 
74. Hmm. It's got uh, Long Haired Country Boy. Oh, yeah. And it's also got that other, what's that other one? It's uh, South's Gonna Do It Again. Damn straight we are. Vicky <laughs> 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 Beck actually plays uh, Dobro on uh, one of these songs. Long Haired Country Boy, I think. That's a name yeah, brand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a name brand. You know Charlie Dan is from Leland, North Carolina. He's a North, North Carolina, Carolina boy. North Carolina? I thought he was a South down, Carolina It's boy. down east near uh, Wilmington, I believe. I got you. Wolfington. Yeah. Also, interesting about uh, Charlie Daniels, I didn't know this, uh, factoid, mm -hmm. he produced the Youngbloods, uh, one of their albums, back in the day, like 1969. Wow. So, you know, the Youngbloods from get, everybody get together, I tell you love what. one another, blah, blah, blah. Let's take a short break for one okay. of these guys. Okay, I got three more to talk about. Well, let's do this because it is 12 a.m. and it is officially my damn birthday. <laughs> what? Are you kidding me? What? It's my birthday. So we're Happy doing a birthday. Six... You dunked in my glass. I did do that. I don't know why I did that. Hmm. Happy birthday to me. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> well, happy birthday there. Thanks, man. We're going to try to do it as good as this year we did last year. Hell, last year I kept it a Twix of lines. That's all you can ask for out of a grown damn man. What you got left? <laughs> uh, well, from um, from my good friend at oh. Underdog, Jonathan. Yeah. I got a couple to talk about. Great. This is uh, Lori Anderson, mm. Home of the Brave. I don't think it's I've an seen album. this one. There was a film called Home of the Brave that came out. This is an oh. album from that film. There's some there's some studio material. There's also some material from the film, which is a it's a it's a performance. We saw Lori at uh, Salem College. Were you there? Yes. Okay. Good. I was there. <laughs> Me and you both this album, LPs this, under our shirt to try to get her to sign. That's right. This album this has uh, Adrian Ballou on it and Bill Laswell. I think it's got some recorded music, uh, recorded voice of uh, William Burroughs. Um, very cool. Yeah, so it's it's a uh, I I love Laurie Anderson and the, you know just so weird and avant garde and just interesting to. Of course, you know she was married to uh, Lou Reed. Lou Reed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, that's that's one of those. And I I know we said this when Lou Reed died. Such an interesting relationship. Sure. Uh, could, could you imagine Laurie Anderson and Lou Reed around a coffee table? Uh, I mean, around a breakfast table Sunday morning. Sunday morning. Yeah. Okay, how about this one? This is uh, the Dead Kennedys. Oh. Frankenchrist. Dude. Original press. What? Yeah. I'm throwing up. From Alternative Tentacles. I'm going to throw up. Came out in 86, I think. That sounds about right. Uh, I got 85. This I is the third LP. I got a scab on the back of my head, but part of it came they off. They say it's more psychedelic and progressive and slower than most of the punk, you know, stuff they put out. Dude. It's got the uh, that's an Shriners, epic. Shriners on the cover. That's too much score. Too much score. Too much score. Well, here's the part that makes it too much score. Okay. Um, the, what makes this album uh, memorable is the, uh, the poster that came with it. And this actually, I picked this up a couple days ago, but I actually came with a poster. Um, this is called uh, Work 219 Landscape XX, which is also known as the Penis Landscape uh, by Geiger. This is HR uh, Geiger. I'm not, I'm not showing this up close because I don't want this show to get popped. But this is the poster. It caused so much trouble. The LA uh, police charged uh, Jello Biafra with uh, distributing harmful materials to minors. The case ended. In a hung jury. Oh, what this poster is? I didn't, I didn't show you up close, but it's a bunch of penises and vulvas, basically. Vul in the act of vulva sex. Yeah, it's like a, it's like a, like the uh, sixteen Marylands, but there's something else going on here. Is that a bruise? There's yeah, there's some disgusting <laughs> things to see in this pit, and I don't want to show the poster because I want the show to live. It's like watching a rat get raped by. But a uh, the trial nearly killed the label, nearly killed the offer and, and you know, the uh, the record label. But uh, I was really happy to get this. I think this is the most I've ever paid for a used record, by the way. And really? I, I won't tell you how much I paid for. That's all right. That's a score, though. I mean, that is a score. Less than 20. And it's in really good shape. A little more. That's terrific. 
cool. You know, Last paid, but not least. I think my most, I, I paid 17 for that uh, Zappa. I have to thank my son Weasel. for this last one because he gave me a gift uh, certificate to Earshot. Which oh. Is, uh, there's one in Greenville, there's one in Winston, and I went to the one in Winston, cause, of course, because I can walk to it from my house. Yeah. Um, and we were talked about earlier about the can releases. Right, the, the reissues from now, this year. I want to get the most for my, my dollar, and I love can. I've got a couple of their records already, Tagamago, and the one that's called Can, which is a... It's got the soup can on it? I, no, no. No, that's the mo movie. Uh, yeah, monster movie? Yeah. No, no. That's uh, Iggy, Iggy, I did the... the, no, the, the one with the word on it. <laughs> anyway, yeah. the thing about Can that's just really cool is they owned their own studio, so they recorded everything that they did. They weren't, just, they weren't set out to say, okay, we're going to do an album and it needs 14 songs and it needs to start with this theme about, you know, the boy and his bicycle. They just recorded everything they did. They did a lot of improv and they did a lot of, you know, just jamming. Yeah. This is called Unlimited Edition. It came out in 76, but what it is, it's a bunch of stuff from their early days on through 76 that they had recorded and not released before. Wow, that's um, cool. They had put out I've a, not heard this. They had put out an album called Limited Edition earlier, um, which was a limited press mm -hmm. uh, thing. And this was kind of along those same lines. They, had, they have so much material that we'll probably still get canned records long into our, you know, lives. That's awesome. That's a good, um, that's a good thought to have, this bro. Is the, this is, this is the, the to think of when I'm 50, press, they'll, they'll still be a Spoon record records, coming out. 2014 unlimited edition, and it, I really love this record. I, I listen, actually, I listened to this last time I was here. I put this on on the way home and listened to it, and just kind of let let you know let my mind take me where it what needs to go with Can you know playing as the background soundtrack to that. So that's pretty damn awesome. Yeah. I don't know that one as much, but like I was saying, it, it's a it's an awesome fault to have that. Um, Maybe in ten years, I'm I turned thirty eight right now. Uh, that in ten years, maybe there's going to be still can music that they're going to release. Right. I mean, maybe, maybe not. Bought on cassette. Maybe. Well, yeah, by then the, the thing will be cassettes and eight tracks, and everybody will be all into that. But uh, I would like to have that Guardians of the Galaxy cassette though. Yeah, that'd be pretty cool. I like cassettes. I've man. seen that in the stores. I play them in my car. I still got a, a cassette in my car. I got a six. Six disc in. Didn't you say that thing came out and people were buying it like crazy money, and then the the, the record yeah. company decided, oh, oh, we're gonna put some yeah, more out. Here's it at. Because it came, I think it came out on record store day or something like that. We got the cassette. It was limited quantities. People freaked out, and then they were like, uh, oh no, we're gonna we're gonna put some more out. It's basically a compilation of, of music from '73 and '74, which is a great thing to have. Sure. I mean, I, I was actually looking for it the other day. The album, couldn't find it. So, I do love the movie, by the way. Yeah. I got it on Blu-ray for Christmas. Oh, sweet. All right. I'm going to tell you what All we're right, going to do. Whatever. All right. Mm. Yeah. Uh, what we're going to do, since we're finishing up this dig of the week, this muddled dig of the week with uh, some stuff that we you play. You music playing in the background? That's what I'm hearing. We'll figure it out. I don't know. Uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to take a quick break, and we're going to come back here with a So To Speak and Chip Chat. So uh, we will appreciate everybody for joining us and uh, definitely appreciate them for uh, staying with us. Uh, and we'll be right back here on Grown Man Record Night with a So To Speak and Chip Chat, so you're going to want to stay tuned. Uh, see if you can detect a little, uh, a little, a little theme for our commercials here, a uh, couple of them. Well, I left Kentucky back in 49 and went to Detroit working on assembly. Line. Since you and my little girl are moving away, there's one thing you need to know. 10, 10, 3, 2, 1. You think she'll call her mother a lot? Yes, and hopefully her father, too. But you'll be glad that 10, 10, 3, 2, 1 saves you big time on your phone bill. Will they talk long? <laughs> That's the beauty part. It doesn't matter. 10, 10, 3, 2, 1 saves you 50% on every call over 20 minutes. 50%? That's big. That's huge. So those half-hour talks with her mom are going to cost you a lot less. Dad, are you giving away the family secrets? I gave him the best one I have. <laughs> Dial 10, 10, 3, 2, 1 to save. If you ask anyone on the... I bet that pizza tastes good. Mm -hmm. You've never seen a place like Showbiz Pizza Place. We'll serve you a pizza second to none. So come for the pizza, stay for the fun. Showbiz Pizza Place with over 60 electronic games. Pizza baked fresh every day. And the stage show extravaganza on three stages. So come for the pizza, stay for the fun. Thank you.
عارف جبنا الكلام ده من منين؟ مفيش داعي، باكل كتير. حلوة يا جميل. Just you know why. Just you know why. Why ما يتقلهاش لأ. I went to black. Everybody stand by. Uh, our battery went dead, so just give us a, give us a couple of seconds. Actually, this will give me a good chance. Our good buddy Spencer, uh, for my birthday, made me a graphic, man. Look at this. Not only is this one of my fa favorite albums of all time, but that's got my guard on it. <laughs> it's got my guard on it. And uh, a little grown man record night down there. What a damn great uh, birthday present! <laughs> this is uh, this is fantastic, man. I can't uh, I can't say how uh, hey, how appreciative uh, I am for this right here. Also, while we're right here, you know, uh, I know everybody celebrates the new year in uh, different ways, and uh, I wanted to say that what we do around my way uh, is the real traditional Southern way. So uh, for New Year's, you want to have your good luck meal. Uh, actually, it's not just good luck, but um, you got your black eyed peas uh, for your luck. Um, no, that's for your money, change money in your pocket. You got your collard greens for your paper green folding money and your hog jaw, which is for luck. And that's right, folks, not ham. Uh, not just pork in general. We're talking mother effing hog jaw or hog jowls, as some people say. Look at this right here. It's like bacon on steroids. Uh, that's how I best describe hog jaw. If you've never had hog jaw and you're a meat eater, some people don't dig on swine. That's cool, baby. But uh, if you do dig on swine and you've never had hog jaw, Honey, hush your mouth. Honey, hush your mouth. Go get some damn hog jaw. It'll it'll blow your damn mind. I swear it. I swear it. Um, that's what you want to do. Steve's in there peeing, and it sounds like a horse going to the bathroom. I'll be honest with you. Um, I don't know what's going on. Our battery died, but we switched out our battery. Now we're good to go. Don't worry about it. We're all right. Everybody's all right. Um, but dude, that graphic for sure. Dude, the Mr. Bungle deal with my, my gourd on it? That's top shelf business. That makes an old man happy on his birthday now, let me tell you what. Uh, makes me want to play that record. I'm going to play this. I don't know. We got some other records to play. I don't want to, I don't want to hog the stage. I don't want to hog it up too much. How big is your prostate? <laughs> what is that? It's pretty big. It's pretty big, man. There's all kinds of stuff going on. Yeah? Oh. Okay. Well, oh, I'll tell you what. Let's get into a little soda speak. Um, I got it's, good a, be, it's good to be back. I got a soda here tonight that um, I don't... We may have done. I don't think we've done. Ah, let's do it. But we're going to do it any damn how. You're um, in a ginger mood. I think last week you guys were... Uh, we did the, uh, the ginger... A bunch of redheaded folks on the show. We did. No, you did the ginger... What are those called? Ginger snaps? They're, like, they're no. like the orange slices, but it's really gin, hot ginger version. Hot ginger. And it's terrific. So tonight, what we got... Do you ever notice ginger has hairs? Like little hairs? Just like the redheaded mugs. Gross. What's up with ginger? I don't know. They ain't got no souls. That's what I heard. I done hear it. Did it? Did it? Uh, what we have tonight is an extra ginger brew, an all-natural Jamaican-style ginger beer from yeah, what's Reeds. The company? Reeds. Yeah, they're they're well known for their ginger. Uh, yeah. Ginger beer. Freshly brewed from sparkling filter water, sweetened by a blend of cane sugar, pineapple juice from concentrate and honey 
Well, GD, uh, fresh ginger root, lemon, and lime juices from Concentrate. There's no damn way this is going to be bad. Terrific stuff, man. It's a, a Jamaican ginger beer. So let's give this a day in court if we've not. We'll pretend we have it, so. Wow. That is what I would like to call complex. That's got a lot of uh, complex flavors going on. Let's hold this guy up, Jay. Internet it's not. It's not ginger ale. No, it's not ginger ale. You t all that citrus going on. Yeah, there's something else going on there. And then the hot on the very back end. It's definitely got that ginger flavor going. Yeah. Way back. Yeah. But it but takes like 30 so, seconds. It's not like Blinham's where it's like, bam! Ginger ale. It's good, though. It's good. It's subtle, yet provocative. It's expensive. It is expensive. I think I've seen those in the store, and they're yeah. like 7 bucks for us. This is a five, 5 for a 4. 5 for a 4. So, yeah. eh. What? Oh, you know, a four pack, five bucks. Yeah, uh, but this is interesting and it's unique and um, and it's my birthday. So but you're not going to drink six of those, so no. four pack will be just fine. And if I'm not drinking a cold beer or um, it's not Friday night, I'm drinking water. Okay. I drink water when I'm not. Ugh. That's good. I like that a lot. Okay. It's got its own thing going on. I like somebody that steps up and does their own We'll damn drink thing. that at your funeral. <laughs> Which will inevitably be coming very soon. Get your bets in, folks. <laughs> Place your bets. Over the contest. VC contest. VC contest. When will bananas bite it? When will bananas bite it? The when will bananas <laughs> bite it contest. <laughs> um, I heard some people want to come actually come to the show. We may start opening that up. We're going to open it up. It's a crazy situation. All I want people to do is go ahead, go back and listen, listen to the words, really listen to the words of um, Who Can It Be Now? I'll buy it. I, no, I, but I'm, I'm open to that. <laughs> I'm open to that. No, I'm that way during the week when I don't know that people are coming over. But I, this, some of the folks, Metal Theologian had mentioned coming up. I think that'd be super cool. Yeah. Sean from NJ had mentioned uh, coming up to New Jersey at one point. Coming down. No, no, going, coming up to New Jersey. Oh, you going up there. Yeah. Taking the show on the road. Be, yeah, which would be cool. And likewise. They got, they got Wi-Fi up there? I'm pretty sure. It's, and uh, meat, meat packing. And likewise, if he came down here, that'd it's be cool. Flavors. So, I mean, there's a, there's a select few people that I'd be cool with that. And the people that have uh, remarked to that have, have fallen under that umbrella. They have, to, they have to understand it's not a normal place. It, this is not a normal place. This is not a normal place. Uh, it's like um, like an insane asylum. Uh, it's it's like something. It's something, but that'd be a good time. <laughs> we could uh, <laughs> we could uh, we make some fun times out of it now. Okay. <laughs> some good soda. Yeah. <laughs> Let's. Uh, what you got in the bowl? Need to flip flip to another graphic so we can talk about the bowl. Let's talk about the bowl. Okay. And another graphic for uh, Chip Chat. So graphically laden. Um, I was peeing while you showed that latest graphic. Is that, did I miss that? Which one? The, the Your Mr. face Bumble? on Mr. Yeah. Bumble. Yeah. Hey, was, you, you were uh, peeing for like, it was 55 to 70 seconds. Yeah. I think I was. It's one of those where you start laughing while you're halfway through and go, are you serious? Are you serious? <laughs> and it's like still going. You're like, oh, why that's pretty this, cool. Why does it smell like onions? <laughs> beneath, mine, beneath the spring grass. My, mine smells like onions. Does it now? Yeah. I don't. Mm. Want, I'm not even looked it up because I don't want to worry about it. Um, if you've been with us for any particular time here on Grown Man Record Night, I've mentioned this twice. I know in Chip Chat as a servant suggestion, and it was actually in the very, very. You know when I had first. a when I had a problem is when I realized my my pee smelled like sugar smacks. See, that's what I thought. I was like, I thought I, <laughs> I thought I had the when, diabetes. When your pee smells like sugar smacks, my pee smells like doctor. onions though, not go sugar smacks. Not onions. That's weird. That's weird. Like I've been eating grass. Yeah. Okay. Continue. <laughs> kind of like, kind of like that. No, if you've watched it for any particular time, you know that in our first chip chat ever, I talked about one of my favorite serving suggestions, and that is potato salad. Potato salad. 
That good old, good old fashioned yellow potato salad. The yellow potato salad, not big hunks of potatoes drenched in mayonnaise. My mom's potato salad, which well, is yellow, because like, it has mustard, a little bit of mayonnaise. I'll tell you what, I like, I like German potato salad, which yeah. is it doesn't have yellow. It's like vinegar based with be hot. bacon, hot bacon. I just finished a whole container. <laughs> I had it on Christmas. So I'm coming over. Wait, I'm already here. Um, but what, what we have here is a Kroger cheddar and sour cream ripple brand. Now you're going to hold up. You don't think it's going to hold oh, up to hell, the... Oh, uh, hell no. That's been in the fridge, too. It's going it to be has. tight. Tight. So I'm going to kind of carve my way through this here. Look at there. That dude. Regular. This is a Kroger brand? Yep. Out of Chicago, out, out of Cincinnati? Kroger? Regular chips, uh. barbecue chips, cheddar and sour cream chips with potato salad. I'm telling you, it's the real deal. And it's a situation that you can encounter fairly often if you're a regular kind of guy. Get a good one. That's good. As, as Mr. Hand would say. Is that your mom's potato salad? Mm hmm. That's good. We're not mayonnaise fans in the Miller house. You guys are a meat, meat and potatoes kind of family. Mm hmm. Dad of that. Oh, yeah. If he doesn't, that shit ain't gonna be made. I'm gonna tell you right now. <laughs> We're not fans of mayonnaise in my house. No, not at all. Much more a mustard fan. There's no mayonnaise in that? A little bit. There's gotta be a little bit. But it's gotta be enough to turn it yellow. If it's white, vinegar, we ain't eating it. So that white coleslaw is right out. No, we eat the hell out of that. <laughs> okay. Tell me what that's all about, Steve. What, the next one? Yeah. Well, I was in Hotlanta. Came across uh, way better snacks. I think we might have done a way better before, but it wasn't this. We did do one. This is guaranteed quality sprouted germinated ingredients. All right. What does that mean? I don't know. What we have here, oh my sweet, pumpkin cranberry corn tortilla chips. Show that back. It's got like a weird colored pumpkin on there. Pumpkin? Nobody, nobody eats a white pumpkin. So here we go. We're going to try these because I, I always complain that we don't do enough corn snacks because sure. so, there are so many more potato Keep chips on the market than there are good, good corn chip products, I think. Okay, it looks pretty raw and kind of cool, actually. I'll show this off. Like a nice multigrain? Yeah, a very nice multigrain. Got some red flakes of like cranberry in there. Oh, it reminds me of the Utz multigrain chips. So let's try it. Hearty. Oh, wow. Definitely hearty. I think that'd be really good with a potato salad. Thank you. Mm. Break it back out. Bring it back over here. This is really good. Not salty. No. Not, not too sweet. No, I was worried the uh, pumpkin cranberry would be too much. No. Very subtle, yet provocative. Way better snacks. Not cheap, I'll tell you that. But, yeah. um, you know. It was the holidays, and I felt like buying some really cool chips. That's what I've been doing. When I'm on vacation, my idea of vacation is not traveling to some foreign land. It's, it's buying whatever frozen crap I want at the grocery store and eating it even during the week. That's what vacation means Doing today. things like that you normally wouldn't do. Exactly. That's good. Those are good chips, man. I keep dropping the shit on my pants. P-A-N-C-E. These are good. I didn't think I would like these. I didn't think I would either. That's a very good way to do a nice rugged chip. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Okay. I'm down with that. Hey, we appreciate everybody joining us here for a, a damn uh, uh, birthday and holiday filled uh, grown man record night. We had a good time tonight. Make sure everybody keeps up with us on our Facebook page. 
um, as well as our damn uh, YouTube page, if you're not a fan of that. If not, what the heck's wrong with you? Go get yourself a, go get yourself a, a YouTube login, and you go over there and you like the Grommet Record Night page. I'm not asking too much. Go over and do that. Both men like the YouTube. Remember, we're all, we're always live Friday nights on the Ustream. Um, if you're able to catch us, that's cool. I know folks go out and go to movies and talk to women and oh, you know, I do, see people at the movies. Do you know what? Things. I, I, I do spent, that. I dropped sixty bucks at the movies, just like that. Yeah. Family of four saw Big Hero Six today. Good movie. I'll sure. good movie. I don't think I would have paid that any other way that it was family and grandkids and you know it was one of those things you just got to do it but it yeah. was a good movie but 60 bucks for four tickets and then some snacks that's rough they do it and it's not the experience it used to be especially if you own a big tv or a larger tv it's not it's not the same experience so they should cut down on the prices mm. that's my opinion that and 50 cents will get you a cup of coffee somewhere <laughs> I try to say in the great sound and the great whatever, but you still got to deal with a place to sit and deal with the fact that there's food under your feet. Home. Sponsored by Wendy's. Uh, all right. Thanks for joining us. Uh, happy birthday to me, for Jay, for Steve. Fink. I have no idea. Oh, I guess I should have known. I'm Mikey. Because we did this show a year ago. Uh, we'll see you next week. Everybody have a happy new year. Get your shit so, together. January, this is the year to get your damn shit together. Your birthday's January 3rd? Yeah. Okay. The, the Parahelion. The day we should have done, what was it, 80? 77. 77. We did that last year. We did it last year. We we're we're not going to repeat ourselves. No, we're we not. We only do that every other week. Yeah, we repeat it every other week. Uh, for Jay and Steve Fever, I'm Mikey Bananas. Thanks for all the love, everybody. We'll see you next week. Uh, get your shit together. Do good this year. I'm counting on you. We're all counting on you. The world's counting on you. Do Thank the you. Right, do the right thing. We'll see you next week for another edition of Girl Man Record Night.